Hello. Hey, congratulations on your series of murder in Big Horn. Thank you. Thank you. And more of a congratulations is being showcased, just showcased at Sundance uh, this year and uh, it's upcoming uh, for Showtime. How do you folks feel about that? Which, <laughs> which part? The Sundance part or the Showtime part or all of it? All of it. Everything. Um, Rizal, you want to take that one first? Yeah, sure. It's a little strange, you know. Um, it's the thought of celebrating because of the subject matter of our series is is harrowing and um, sensitive and serious. Uh, it's it's really hard to um, celebrate the series in a way. And but the way I've been thinking about it is uh, celebrating uh, the hard work that was put in by everybody to ensure that our communities and our relatives and the families are given a platform to to speak on this very important issue. Yeah. I mean, one thing, uh, if there is anything to celebrate, it's the fact that this issue will be brought to a much, much wider audience um, than it ever has before and in a much deeper way. Um, and yeah, we'll reach uh, a non-native audience, which is, um, you know, we think is is one of the one of the important ways in which um, change might start to happen is if uh, everyone in this country is aware of this issue, not just within the native community. Most uh, most excellent. So let let's ask this: what what actually sparked you two to actually do this documentary series? It was actually um, it was Showtime that brought me a very general idea. Uh, I'm wondering if I would be interested in. Um, you know, investigating maybe is the wrong word, but seeing if I could find a series uh, within this topic. They were interested um, in uh, exploring the issue of, of missing and murdered Native American women. Um, uh, and so, in, you know, I'm a white man. So uh, I questioned directly to Showtime whether I was even the right person to do this. Um, and I have a years long relationship with them and I have a decades long career making documentaries and documentary series. And, you know, when I thought long and hard about it, I thought I could, there is value I can bring to this, certainly not alone. Um, but if I partnered with the right native filmmaker, um, I think together we could actually do something extraordinary because I, I know how to build a series like this. Um, but I knew nothing about the Native community, and um, I brought Rizal on. Um, I had called the, the the director of the Sundance Indigenous Program first, um, and he and um, another filmmaker who I had called, a Native filmmaker named Sterling Harjo, both said the exact same thing, which is, you have to call Rizal Ben Ali. You guys would think that would be the perfect partnership for you. And Rizal and I talked for, for months, and um, ultimately... Um, we partnered and um i think the collaboration has been extraordinary at least for me maybe maybe Rizal has a different view of it oh matthew of course this collaboration was ideal and it's been the best collaboration i've ever been a part of um and i too question whether or not i should uh do this project with him at the very beginning because um i just was unsure with um with with the whole thing but once we started talking about it and once um i got to know matthew and he assured me you know that showtime was was behind presenting this issue in in an authentic way um i i knew i couldn't step down and and say no that I had the decision and opportunity to to make that would ensure that this was done in an appropriate and ethical way. So um, I I joined the team, and now here we are. It is amazing that on how many different perspectives you brought into the series um, with all the different subjects. Could you talk about? the subjects that you actually brought in and how you managed to convince them to participate into this 
how can you say very tough uh um you know tra tragedy you mean subjects as in uh the families involved yes or? absolutely yeah well um when Matthew and I um, settled that we would focus on Bighorn County specifically because of the large and high concentration of cases there, um, we first and foremost uh, reached out to families who were already vocal and already had been advocating for their loved ones. And um, as much as we, you know, we wanted these families to participate in the series, it was really up to them. So it was it was their choice um, to discern if they wanted to go forth with with our 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 doc series. And a lot of that had to do with building trust and building relationships. And we had to be very honest and clear with our intentions. Um, and our intent was pretty simple. We wanted to um, not only create uh, not only humanize their loved ones, um, but also illuminate th their cases that they had trouble um, getting awareness for. So, so I'm curious the the um, the the indigenous girls that are chosen for this series. Was it chosen because they were the most vocal? Because there must have been hundreds of girls that are actually missing, or, or is this the ones that are relevant in the news currently? No, I mean, when we set out to make this series, we knew instantly we did not want to make a polemic about MMIW, um, about statistics. We wanted to tell a human story, and through those stories, um, we wanted the issue to sort of grow organically out of those stories. Um, and um, we ended up focusing on Bighorn County because there is a high concentration of the one of the highest concentrations of MMIW cases in a very small geographical area. Um, the reason that these three cases were chosen amongst other reasons um, is that these are three of the cases that most prominently put this issue <laughs> on the map. Let me start over. The cat distracted me. Um, you know, we chose these three cases um, for a few reasons, but one of the main ones is that through the vocal grassroots advocacy of these families, um, the issue of MMIW sort of started to garner national attention. So um, we could tell their personal stories, but also through their personal stories, we could watch this mo movement grow um, onto a national stage. We, we also needed cases that had readily available information because, because a lot of, uh, because of a lot of cases are open um, no matter how much you try to get information from agencies and whatnot, you won't get it. And so you're not able to um, paint the full story of a case unless you have information there. Um, so that is kind of how we 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 came up with with focusing on these these particular ones. So did you did you find there are some resistance from the law enforcement then? I mean, it seems like they they erected uh, some barriers possibly through a systemic uh, you know, um history. Yes. I mean, from day one we, there was I mean, we were stonewalled, but uh, more importantly the families have been stonewalled for years, decades, uh centuries even. Um yeah, I mean, there was no there's virtually no transparency, certainly if not from the Bighorn County Sheriff's Department, as far as how at least the investigations into Case Harris case and into Salinas case were were handled. Um, that's all we were asking from day one. We had we reached out to them so many times, I can't even count. Um, and they just refused to participate, and the FBI refused to participate. Um you know, these families are left with absolutely no information about any investigation that's going on into their loved ones' cases. And it's the, it's the most heartbreaking thing 
um, just what, you know, watching them just try to get a law enforcement agency to talk to them is really just, it's staggering, um, the amount of neglect and negligence that has been going on in that area. During your entire research process, I, I know if, uh, if, people watch this series were were there any situation of that that you discovered that ended up with a good ending or good news what would that what would that look like to you do you think would that be like a one of the missing women comes back or yeah. a, or at least justice has been sure, uh, yes. has been achieved by apprehending a perpetrator um no I mean, not to my, I, can, I can't result. Can you remember? No. Mm -hmm. That's one of the the truly tragic parts of all of this. And someone, you know, in Shakaya Blue Harding's story, um, someone says, a, a youth counselor um, that knew Shakaya basically says every case of someone being trafficked out of this area that she has ever heard of uh, or knew um, the victim of, she says those women have never come back so how did you know how to end this series i know it's a three-part series but you could have gone on forever you know um with this uh, series or waiting the question was um, i'm sorry what was it when we how, how, how do you know when to end this series mm. i mean we took these cases as far as we could take them Roselle and I are not private investigators. We're documentary filmmakers. And with every ounce of information we could garner, with every interview that we had done with family members, with witnesses, um, with ex-law enforcement, we put these cases together as best we could. But ultimately, you know, most likely these will never be solved. And that is uh, mostly due to the fact that the investigations or lack of investigations you know, they were not handled properly at the time. And there's perpetrators that are walking around that area right now that will probably never be apprehended. Um, but, you know, the end, there will be no end, quote unquote, to this. But it was very important for Rizella and I to tell the story, not specifically of how these cases were solved, but it's more about how these cases came to be in existence. And those reasons are historical. Um, and not just these cases, but a lot of cases in this area, in this country, and in, in this continent. Um, there are historical reasons why Native American women have been put in such vulnerable situations. And, and uh, there are numerous factors that go into it, and they all can be traced back to colonization. Early on, we knew that the series was going to be difficult to end. And what we could give and bring for audiences at the core of this thing was the humanity and doing our best to ensure that audiences could take away understanding more about who we are as indigenous people and could learn, you know, why we've been so vulnerable and how it is a stain on America and its history that these issues and these problems still very much exist in this day and age when you wouldn't think that we would have to be dealing with something like this, but but we are. So it wasn't so much of like, we got to end this somehow. It's more or less, what can we leave audiences with? Well, once again, hey, thank you very much uh, for carrying this conversation with us. Audiences uh, have already checked it out at Sundance and more will check it out at Showtime. And um, thank you for uh, bringing this to light about a very important issue that resonates not just in the Montana area, but across the country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.